All right, it's time. Hi, thank you. Excellent. Excited to be here. We have a great show for you today. Excellent. I'm Will Decker. I uh, flew in from Silicon Valley. I'm very excited to be here today. I work at Plug and Play. That is the uh, world's largest innovation platform. We're most known for being the most active early stage investor in Silicon Valley. We also have many, many corporate programs, over 500 corporations that work with us around the world. I run the media program as well as I'm a partner in our Future Commerce Fund. So super excited to be here today and showcase some excellent companies for you to see on stage. Uh, thank you to NIPA for sponsoring uh, this content and the K-Metaverse Pavilion. Super excited about that. And for today, you're joining us because of the recent COVID-19 and how it has changed significantly our work environments, the lifestyle, and just the way of life and human connections. You heard a lot of excitement and buzz around connectivity and those changes as well. Every year, these issues and challenges have been addressed with the latest technologies and solutions and very innovative business models. We like to delve a little deeper into how this technology will change our world for the better. So, some of the concerns and challenges we need to consider, what are they? They're grouped here. We've got some excellent examples about the potential, and we'd like to share some of these global challenges of the K-Metaverse companies by presenting those to you today to solve some of the most pressing problems, especially how Korea's Metaverse and XR technologies can solve these global challenges. Uh, a ton. So for me, being in Silicon Valley and seeing the original dot-com boom and bust and boom again, it was very clear that the first iteration of the web was very much centered on a specific group of engineers and designers and publishers controlling how the content was displayed and how it was consumed and the protocols for people to interact with one another. The second iteration around web two this was when I was at Yahoo doing mobile product and partnerships, and this was the explosion of app ecosystems. It was also user-generated content and social media and social networks. So the way that people use the web really transformed, and now we're in this next phase, Web3, the metaverse. It's going to be different. Not sure exactly what it will look like, but maybe it'll be different because of the ubiquitous fast speeds and connectivity, computing that is happening now at the edge and everywhere in between. And I would love, I cannot wait for you to hear about these startups who are actively designing and creating the case studies of the metaverse specifically to see what's possible today and what the potential future could look like. So with that, very excited to welcome our first presenter, who's going to do fantastic. The first example case is around metaverse communication. This is by Emotion Wave, and they are innovating user experience through the metaverse Internet of Things, M-I-O-T. So please give a very warm welcome to Emotion Wave. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is David Cho, the CSO of EmotionAve. Today, uh, I would like to introduce the Global Metaverse Concert Technology and our innovative K Metaverse through the O2O solution. As you know, the transition to the contactless society has occurred at a rapid pace. Metaverse is also accelerating its growth as part of the social change. In particular, the metaverse industry ecosystem is becoming more complex due to the Web3, and many digital terms are attributed, yeah, attributed to the general concept of metaverse. The music industry was also affected by this huge trend, so the in music, audio communication, the latency, and the realization of the realistic performances through the actual performance are very important. But uh, however, due to the absence of such a music-only platform and technology, the problem of concert communication through the metaverse in the pandemic era is persists. Yeah, so uh, we made a uh, MUTA, uh, was developed to the 
solve this problem. In addition, in order to realize the sustainability of the metaverse, the Muta Metaverse Station solution is a technology that can share internal and external contents through the establishment of an OS system within the metaverse. In order to connect various metaverse concert, we are uh, trying to eliminate barriers to users' entry into a metaverse by linking the extensions such as uh, uh, near MIDI, or audio sources and others. And the Muta O2 station solution is a technology that links online and offline. It is a metaverse concert type IoT system uh, in which uh, activities in the metaverse are connected to equipment in the real world and operated by making the metaverse assets as such as a uh, sound system or musical instruments and other concert equipment in the real world and physical and uh, linking them. So this is defined as a MIOT in Emotion Wave, the metaverse internet of things. Through these processes, uh, Emotion Wave is innovating the metaverse auto experience rather than simply sharing the online concert experience. So we are achieving technological innovation that can satisfy both audiences and artists uh, through actual instrument sound and sound and lighting production and platform connection technologies and so on. The global concert market is continuously expanding and Korea's K-pop is also joining this way. Through the O2 and Metaverse, we are promoting the expansion of the K-pop industry through K-Metaverse technology and the uh, uh, revitalization of global concert and connect online and offline. This is low cost, high profit structure that allows you to easily and conveniently create your own concert. And this is not far. So with K Metaverse by Muta in Emotion Ape, picture your performances, Muta makes it possible. Thank you. Such an incredible application. Thank you so much, Thanks. David. Uh, I had a quick follow-up question for you. Um, just a phenomenal experience. When you think of the audiences that can be a part of Muta, mm -hmm. how large, how large can they get? Have you had large audiences currently today using the platform, or what's the plan? What's the possibility? Ah, yes, uh, we, we are going to the Muta, Muta Festival in Korea. Yeah, and uh, we are aiming to the effectively introduce the our Muta to one million to users online and uh, 800,000 users in offline and um, end of the year, yeah. Incredible, that's just amazing. All right, well, thank you so much for your presentation. Why don't you join me up here on stage? We'll have a panel with all our fantastic presenters. Up next, a case around transforming technology and entertainment within the metaverse. We have Aria, a mission to solve the lack of global empathy and trust using an AI storytelling engine. Super cool. Why don't you come on up? Oh, check, it's all yours. I'm just kidding. Um, hello, I'm Chuck Che, CEO and director of Aria Studio Incorporate. I'll just skip through that. We're on a mission to solve the lack of global empathy and trust by using AI and interactive technology. So let's go back a little. The evolution of media has brought just more than means of communication, like the good old days of people gathering together, watching movies and talking about things. But it wasn't just about the entertainment, it was about bringing them together, all of them, and sharing each other's thoughts, emotions, and ethical values. We are living in the hyper-connected society depicted by the metaverse. And Web 2.0 has allowed us to share more information on and contents freely, or have we? Today, the story contents and media entertainment is following us, but still the linear media OTT platforms are losing the audiences, like the Netflix turning into a game company now. And why is that? So the development of such metaverse technology has provided a new way of information and connection by replacing the existing face-to-face -face and dense relationship. But there's a question whether the quality has been improved. And that's the actual metaverse that we see today. 
Mm. And of course, we have smartphones, but interaction is not smart enough for being the metaverse ready and for the true Web3 entertainment, in our opinion. So this leads to a lack of empathy due to a lack of emotion in connections and relationships, the fear of new encounters and lack of me uh, mental space to accept global diversity, multiculturalism that shakes up the foundation of individuals and community as a whole. I'm sorry I'm mentioning a lot of problems because you are taking in more information, but you are spitting out more information. The more most valuable thoughts are coming out from you and can our media contents bear all of it? Today, we look for many ways to allow this human to computer communications by using agents like virtual humans. We were heavily inspired by Microsoft Milo project back in 2006. So Aria is putting people inside the movie without having them ruining it. And we found a way. What if you could talk to the movies and affect the characters' morals and decision making that affects the entire story plot? Remember the Fight Club when Tyler Durden talks to you and you probably want to talk back to him? That kind of moment. And what if you could continue your way of communicating to the world through uh, your virtual friends and that helps you to define who you are? And no, we're not talking about chatbot here, um, but as a story living character itself. We're talking about the character that remembers you and, and helps you connect virtually as your mirror to the world. In non-face-to-face -face communication and content as a medium, we believe that a dialogue-based interactive AI curation using GPT-3 and a test-based learning to remember specific scenarios, username, and even their memories to communicate emotionally and morally with individuals and relationships is possible. And it is expected to be the major technology that connects global communities closely. We can make a single character expand into limitless content of creation. This is the power of our AI interactive production technology. It does not use joysticks, game pads, or shooting guns. It's not about choosing yes or no. Um, it's about natural language to communicate verbally using your minds, so you could have a smarter interactions with the content. Story Engine is what we call the tool to help. Uh, we're mixing state-of-the-art technology such as the GPT-3 that can make generative dialogues and animations uh, uh, to the virtual characters that could understand your intentions and prompts. It will build invisible, in, invisible boundaries and hurdles to stay on point and stay safe. You and I are existing in here and your story time, your real-time interaction could be the process to prove your existence in the virtual world. This can be done while you're not just blinded by a fancy visuals. We're also inspired by universal character model by ETC. An artist creates, audience enjoys, and they share the experiences. And this is a participation a data, uh, data uh, that is very valuable for generative narrative driven uh, story content of virtual human we're creating. So with our AI interactive technology, we could have characters like Buddy here that remembers your name. And we were, we were also the production power behind LG's AI virtual human that was showcased last year at CES. And we're going further this time by utilizing GPT-3 to make the virtual human smart enough to understand your emotions and intents. And in our virtual movie experience, you can be a hero in a movie at a comfort of your couch and using your TV setup box and mobile devices. Running out of time. And we're expanding to our storytelling methods to every method and we're very uh, agnostic in, in media formats. And that was us, Aria. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chuck. So, Thank you. yeah, um, just fantastic to see yeah. it in action there. Yeah. Um, you mentioned morals and having it be adaptive to many different environments and ways to tell stories without defining entertainment. Mm. Maybe what opportunities do you feel are there for real time, sort of curated, moderated storytelling? Are there any specific examples or opportunities that you see? Well, the first is advertising, but in, in the right way. So you're not stick your things in front of the audience or user's face, but you can actually talk to them without tracking their data like stalkers. But you can actually actually do a face-to-face -face conversation through our virtual agents and able to understand their intentions and morals. And we can, it's basically you're creating an AI uh, instead of uh, going through entire uh, inquiries uh, from the AI. Uh, you could have your intentions built in uh, to uh, by utilizing the AI, right? 
Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much. Will you come thank join you. me? Thank you. Right. We'll do. Next up, uh, an example around the area of improving your emotional well-being. Um, very important these days. John is fighting mental health issues, loneliness, and depression through some fun K metaverse. Please welcome John. Hello. Um, I'm Sanjay Yoon. I'm the CEO and founder of Jan Company. What does Jan mean? Jan has multiple meanings in Korean. It's cheers. It's also feelings that make you feel sorry. Aw, kind of feeling. And something like, ta-da, Jan. So our virtual, new virtual drinking platform, Jan, comes to our users who might be feeling Jan so they can meet Jan and hang out over a drink to feel connected, understood, and have some fun. The case study I'll share with you is fighting mental well-being issue through fun K-metaverse. Have you ever gotten into bed at the end of the day and realized you haven't spoken out to anyone since the day before? I see some people nodding. Or simply found yourself feeling completely alone? According to a Harvard report, over one in three Americans face serious loneliness during the pandemic, including over 60% of young adults. According to a global survey too, about 33% of adults experience some level of loneliness worldwide. Yes, it's true that the pandemic has deepened loneliness, but were people not feeling lonely before the pandemic? Of course they were, of course you were, right? Um, why? Because even before the pandemic, once beco we become an adult, it becomes more and more difficult to meet, connect, and have a meaningful interaction um, with others due to space and time constraints, lack of energy, lack of opportunities, to name a few. Emotional, situational, social, and chronic, there are a lot of types of loneliness, and these all should be tackled differently. Depending on the type of loneliness um, you're feeling, there are different things you can try to solve the problem. Focus on things you enjoy, seek therapy, meet people and socialize offline or online. There are many services that can help improve loneliness and our emotional well-being. Some products are casual and one-way, like meditation apps. Some are professional and one-way, like providing customized tools for mental health. Some are professional and interactive, like matching a counselor for one-on-one -on -one therapy. Some products are casual and interactive, like social gaming or casually communicating with other people. Jan takes the most casual and interactive form. Jan connects people based on their interests and needs, allows them to have two-way video communication using our unique features that guarantee a virtual fun night out from the comfort of your own home. With whomever they hang out with, whether with family, strangers who become your new friends, or even celebrities. On Jan, you can have a drink with anyone, anywhere, anytime. It's a virtual bar that connects you with friends and family you miss from the comfort of your own home. Humans never fail to find a way. You can also meet new friends um, on, on Jan with similar interests, whether that's singing karaoke or talking about child, child care, as you once did on AOL long time ago. You can even hang out with celebrities on Jan. Our users get together from 47 different countries to talk to celebrities and get comforted. They not only hang out with the celebrity, but also make new friends within the group. Jan currently takes the form of a drinking video chat platform as we only launched in March of this year. But we aim to upgrade to become more three-dimensional metaverse where users can build their own space, own three-dimensional bar, so to speak, on streets from different times they miss. 
that encourages distant socializing rather than social distancing. To help humans live more like humans, who as a social species have a fundamental need to feel a sense of belonging and connection to others. It's one of Jan's missions to improve mental well-being of humans around the world by making them feel connected and understood and thus feel less lonely and depressed. Jan is not just for when the bars are closed. It's a new social drinking culture we would like to lead. Meet when you're free, where you feel most comfortable and safe, with the people you miss, with new friends you make. Apart but together, you will never feel lonely on Jan. Jan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you a follow-up question? Yes, of course. Well done. Thank you. I love that you can connect with new people, with your own friends, and it stood out to me that you have John with some celebrities, some famous folks that are involved and that you can share John with. Yeah. Do you have any favorites? Were there any favorite celebrities that have used or you would like to use your platform and why? Well, so the, the celebrity, the favorite celebrity I used was a K-pop star named Kyu Hyun from Super Junior. Like he's, he's been around for 17 years, the group, the boy band. Um, and so they have fans from all over the world. So we didn't even have to do, you know, aggressive global marketing. We just posted on his Instagram or Twitter that he's coming, or he actually posted on his Twitter, um, three hours before he came on Jan. And like, you know, it was, Boom, 47 different nationalities gathered to get comforted, to interact, and really sort of have some meaningful time um, where they didn't feel lonely anymore and they felt like, oh my God, this made my day. So, yeah. I love that. It's what's possible. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Come, come join us. <laughs> Excellent. And next, a whole other category around metaverse travel. And with this, Trippy Toes is the next wave of the travel metaverse industry. Super cool, warm welcome for Trippy Toes. It's all yours. Thank you, Will, for a warm, kind introduction. My name is Jiha. I'm the CEO and a founder of Trippy Toes. Our company is a travel metaverse platform that connects the users through the travel videos. You might heard about this game, Second Life, which was launched in 15 years ago, but it was not successful because of the few reasons. There were no Generation MZ. We are very familiar to the game. No mobile, no fast internet, and no pandemics. And nowadays, the metaverse experience through the pandemic experiences, it's surrounded in our daily life. Uh, today, I will provide three different examples in, in three different dimensions. The first one is real value that is expand into a virtual space. So that's a, the people that play around within our metaverse. Uh, surprisingly, the background is all virtual effect. It's fake. So the users, even though they are at home, in their room, they can take your videos as if you are in the Paris, in a Greece, or even in Las Vegas, they play around by sharing their own travel ex virtual travel experiences. And the second example is the virtual value that expand into the real space. Another work that we do, Seoul City. So when you visit Seoul with our applications and specific point of interest and open our app, you will experience augmented reality that you cannot experience in your real life. So th this can be applied to the New York, Las Vegas, bringing your phones and experience the virtual reality in your hand. And the last example is a new value that is created by the virtual world. So our, the, the travel, definition of travel becomes something uh, not traveling twice, three times a year. It's more about daily life. You can experience with something very new in your ordinary life, even though you're going to your workspaces. So the metaverse experience can be designed much more uh, richer through the various context point between the reality and the virtual reality. And the tra travel industry is in a huge transition period. Until today, 
we focus much more on the natural oriented destination. Nowadays, industry based, content based tourism become much more hot. Travel industry was fragmented with so many brands worldwide, and there were no one stop travel platform. And we experienced the big blur where the stages of travel getting much more blurry. What we do is we create a one stop platform that traveler, young traveler, use at every stage of travel. So let's see how it works. Our traveler, they become a ranker of each destinations, Korea, Las Vegas, US, and accommodation. They share their own travel experiences. They got trip cash where they can use it within our platform. And also they can pile up their own reputation so that they can communicate each other within our metaverse. So 20 years of OTA business, online travel agency business, it was all about the lowest available rates that you can book, the good rates of the hotel. And when you come back from the travel, you just delete that. 80% of the users, when you come back from the travel, you don't need that app. Our app, people interact with each other, they, they possess your app, they don't delete it, but they play it even though they're at home. So the numbers that we made in South Korea, it's working. So we made a huge growth in South Korea with this travel metaverse, even though during the COVID period. So uh, metaverse, I will say in one word, is connectivity and also the communications. The communication in between the users within us, within the destination as well, and also within the properties, accommodations. And what travel metaverse do is we link these elements to facilitate our daily life. Thank you very much. Amazing, thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Um, I very much like connecting people with the outdoors and nature, physical or virtual. Mm -hmm. And I like your framework. Uh, I, you talked a little bit about how they were more engaged, the users, um, whether they were at home or not, through the experience. Does that translate into some sort of monetary exchange or currency either in the platform or something that can be exchanged with the different areas they go visit? All right, so we, have, we are on the second stage of our app version and we are launching another uh, update uh, this month. The last, last version was all about uh, getting trip cash within our platform by uploading your travel video and getting good reactions from your neighbors and users, you collect us trip cash. So for, for instance, last year, one of the users collect $8,000 per one year of uh, uploading their own travel video and being a marketer in this platform. And they collect this money to use it uh, to book the hotel worldwide. We have 800,000 accommodation worldwide where they can book it. In our next app, you can, you can use our QR wallet where you can buy the goods in a grocery store. That's coming. Awesome, thank you so much again. Thank you. Come join us down here. Our next category, creating new things in the metaverse. And we've got Crispy Chris joining us to, um, but with their Nori Cube. There you go. HMD free O2O metaverse platform to tell us more about that. Chris. Hi. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm really proud to present uh, for last uh, because there's a, there is a song named Save the Best for Last. You are the save the best for less. Yeah, I'm actually singing. So yeah. So let me yeah, get into the, my agenda. Today's my agenda is Ocho Metaverse uh, platform. Um, do you know the, the definition of Ocho, right? Online to offline. So in the true uh, experience in a uh, Metaverse, uh, what I believe uh, is you have to get that experience both ways, online and offline. So you have to connect the experience between the users and the world. Furthermore, you have to actually connect the metaverse world to the real world. I, th I think that is the true you know, definition of the, uh, the metaverse uh, platform. So uh, uh, the thing is, I'm not really sure about the what really like metaverse is. But the thing is, it seems the metaverse is getting bigger and bigger because lots of corporates, lots of people are into metaverse. They're spending lots of money, like you know, Microsoft, Meta, even like Korean game company Nexon are putting lots of money 
into metaverse. So people are spending so much time in metaverse. So it seems also the, uh, they spend too much time. So in the real world, they don't really have time to spend in the real world. That is what I believe. This is some fact. Uh, maybe it's not correct, but from my experience, from my in a, um, understanding, uh, in Korea, there is a second-hand good market, Dangun market, it's called Karun market. It's get really grown very fast during the pandemic era, like four times uh, growing, you know, uh, because they don't want to go to the, like, pawn shop to buy, like, second-hand good uh, goods. They want to buy second-hand goods in the local area. And also, the number of in uh, convenience store is really increasing because it's very convenient. You can buy something in your real, I mean, your local area. So what about the experience? Maybe you want to get some cool experience in your local area. So this is some case studies in the world uh, getting popular. And when you see the Bello Arena, it's uh, like a Finnish uh, company. They made some immersive uh, sports game in the local area. And also the, the Austrian company named Action uh, gives some holographic experience in a small room. And Neo Experience is a French company. It's also giving you some screen-based, touch-based uh, metaverse game. And the last Imagine Box just started. Uh, they are uh, the uh, uh, Ispai company. They are, they are actually giving some immersive uh, extra platform room for the school. But I think we have a, a better auto XR platform in the real world. Let me introduce NoriCube, created by Crispy. And we having some uh, platform room, uh, like 10 feet, side feet a room. Inside this room, we projected the projection map images. And also, there are lots of sensors on the world, so you can directly just intuitively touch the world to connect to the metaverse world. So this is a little uh, small clip for Nori Cube. So inside this Nori Cube, by the way, it's a cool effect of the logo, Nori Cube. And you will get any types of metaverse experience. You can do some like digital escape room game, or you can get some like digital immersive art by just touching the world. Yes, it's a short clip. Okay, it's just started. It's a Korean artist, like Kim Hong Do, it's very famous. She are not just only uh, inside the world of uh, graphic or art. Also, you can get the interact by touching the world, something like that. So, and also our mission is to uh, connect all the metaverse into this Nori Cube. So for doing that, we are providing some SDK and also uh, we are developing now app stores so any developers can upload their own metaverse world. So these are uh, the works we are doing. So yeah, so Nori Cube, please remember, you and you wanna get some cool auto experience of the metaverse, this, this can be the solution. Thank you. Amazing, thank you so much. Yes. All right, so you talked a little bit at the end about opening the experience through SDKs for yes. other metaverse developers and experiences. Yes. What about the users, the people that walk into the cube? Are you collecting any information demographically about them to personalize the experience, uh, anything like that to understand them better? Uh, it's like when you log in uh, your own uh, maybe m email and website, we're providing some identification. If you put in your ID and password, you will get some maybe your own scores. You will get that in a uh, track record of your experience. That is our you know, purpose of doing that because it can be like, uh, it has to be seamless. You know, it can be just stop. Okay. Fantastic. All right, and next, karaoke in the U.S. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Why don't you join us? I'd love to have a few minutes here to ask all of our presenters some questions. Um, just incredible. You covered such a wide range of experiences and challenges, and it's just so impressive. Plug and Play has seen Metaverse for the past six plus months across the globe, and I think this is the most exciting examples that I've seen. Um, this first one is for each of you. I wanted you 
to talk a little bit about, in the open, I mentioned the different transitions between the web. Web 1, email and publishing. Web 2, user-generated content. Content as king. What do you think will be the killer experience or the killer applications, the most important use case when it comes to Web 3 and the metaverse? Who wants to go first? Can I go first? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it, it is a very difficult question in the Web3, what is the killer app? And, but I think the point is the not a killer app the in the metaverse. I, in my opinion, the what is the killer experience in the metaverse and Web3? So first of all, I think that it, uh, it is expected that a transition of Web1 and Web2 is transition to the metaverse. and. Second is generating the uh, user's characteristic to the making their person. Yeah. yeah. Can I just add to that? Because I also wanted to talk a little bit about identity. So I think uh, the, the, the key experience, which is what Jan is also trying to sort of um, establish, is having your, building your own identity on, on, uh, on uh, the metaverse and creating your own world and sort of expressing yourself through whether that's character avatar or it's through travel or through um, uh, celebrity or wh whatever that might be. So I think that sort of inter social interaction using your own identity um, on, the, on the metaverse is the killer experience. The metaverse uh, is ahead of us, but it's not yet defined. We are on the way to define in each industries. And, and what each of us is experiencing here is the, the boundaries all of all those industries is getting blurry and blurry. And it's a, a connect connection is coming. And all industry itself, we're going to have a identity of the metaverse. So. And, and what metaverse should have, uh, the key elements of metaverse as in a travel uh, in the industry, it's more about if you do some efforts in a digital world, you should have some compensation of your effort. I strongly believe that that's the key part uh, in our metaverse for, for the users to engage and also spend within our platform. Well, the... Um we're, we're only bound by time, space, and existence, and, <laughs> and we found a way to manipulate it through virtually. And in the for, for Web3 and the metaverse, I, I believe there will be uh, restraints. Everyone's here. Everyone believes in the freedom, but somehow we're not. And when you make an appointment, let's say let's meet up at uh, 2 o'clock at the lobby, you have to say the time and space. Otherwise, you can't meet each other. And for metaverse, to me, Everyone should have their own metaverse, and um, but uh, we we have let's say everyone here probably be, be gone from this world within hundred years. I don't know. Yes, but um, so within this limited time frame that we have, uh, we want to build a metaverse the right way. And I find that discipline coming from the film industry. I want to put people in the film and gaming and theme park and able to do that virtually with the social interactions and, uh, and sharing our thoughts and emotions together uh, with the help of AI, I believe it's, it's, it's re we are really close to getting that happen. And I believe that will be the killer app for, for the decade to come. Carpe diem, so making the most of those kind of human intersections. Very cool, awesome. Crispy. Uh, actually, I don't really know the term, I mean the definition of Web3, but I think in my opinion, uh, what I understanding for Web3 is like connectivity, like, you know, semantic, right, in both ways. And then I'm not sure about what is going to be the killer app, but I, I kind of con uh, prospect that the killer app is going to be uh, the probably like cloud-based data service, something like that. You have to get access to your own data and, and, and uh, any metaverse experience in whatsoever uh, environment, right? So um, maybe the trip to Z or, you know, John or me, you know, Nonicure will be the, the, the best solution for Web3.0 uh, in the future, yeah. 
Fanta all right, lots of different perspectives. We'll see who's right. We're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I don't have to answer, so haha. -ha. The next question I want to put to you was, um, why do users today, why do people spend time in the metaverse? What is it about that experience that's engaging or rewarding or giving you value? What, what is it about it that's so attractive to people who are starting to explore? Anyone want to take that? I think there are two things. Uh, people really want to spend their time in the metaverse. The first th thing is definitely it can be like versatile. It meta means like you can get any types of experience. In the real world, you have only one life. But in the metaverse, you have like 10 lives, 100 lives, you know. So that is definitely the reason. But also, uh, it's kind of opposite reason. You want to get some real experience in the, but you can't really get it in the real world. That can be also, you know, uh, yeah. A bi uh, for example, uh, maybe I'm not a smoker, but if you want to stop smoking and then you want to go to some like smoking seminar, then it's kind of embarrassing in the real world. I mean, in Korean culture especially. But in, your, in the metaverse, you can be anywhere, so you can be like anonymous. So that is also one of those reasons uh, people spend time in the metaverse. If I may add to that, because I had some similar thoughts. Um, sorry, I'm keeping like to add on someone's comments. Um, but so um, on Chan, what we're trying to do is like, you can't go back in time, right? Let's think about when you were in college, when you were in your 20s. You miss a certain street that you, you used to go every day and hang out with your friends with. You can go to the same street, but it's not the same. Right? It's very different now with different buildings and different shops. But virtual world on Metaverse, you can actually rebuild that time, that space. Um, and so it's something that you can only enjoy on, on virtual worlds, not something that you cannot sort of find um, offline. So um, on Jan too, like we wanted to do that so you can actually nostalgically go to places uh, where you used to hang out. You can still hang out there with people around the world who, who also miss the similar sort of um, vibe and street, whether that's London, Paris, you know, Montmartre, somewhere, right, from the 1990s or 80s. Um, so just wanted to add to that. So yeah, a mirror is uh, always a good keyword to use because, um, I mean, we, we are interacting because we want to have that empathy to understand each other, meaning we want to find ourselves. I don't want to sound like a philosopher here, but your friends, your family, world that calls you, whomever, hey, father, hey, hey, daddy, hey, uncle, hey, Tom, like, that's a mirror. Like, the world is a mirror to you, defines who you are. And the metaverse is a good way to simulate a different type of existence and a world without being so much in pain and without, because uh, every day, everyone changes in a way. Like, let's say you got a haircut, you left your hair, that's part of you that, that's leaving, but that's but you are still you. But but what defines you? And and even though time passes, we're changing every time. The only way to define yourself is to interact through the interact with the world and I each individuals who could reflect upon you. Right. Uh, that's how I believe the metaverse. Yeah. Amazing. Um, gosh, I love that. Just reflecting on some of those answers, understanding the metaverse can build a deeper connection to the real world or exploration of identity and self-identity. Uh, just really, really cool thoughts and ideas there. Um, what's, so what's the role of industry, of corporations, of enterprises? What is their place and their role in the metaverse? Uh, I think the blend uh, to the digital transformation of each company will be really important. Uh, so the currently our metaverse platforms and services and technologies and other experiences are really separated by, yeah. So making it uh, difficult for customers to share their experience like uh, avatars or their own services like that. So therefore it is uh, so that it falls to convergence of uh, the content's production and the platform sharing between the each metaverse company will be uh, continuously needed. Yeah. Decentralize, <laughs> please. And because the because everyone has to be on the same page. I mean, the world got closer, smaller, 
uh, thanks to the internet, everyone sharing information. Now we need some someone or someone to uh, something to set up the right standard, and someone has a, a, a louder voice to 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 sort out the rules. I would say, and I I, I really expect the larger corporations and whatnot compared to like s small startups like us, hopefully be able to set up the a good standards and hope to uh, decentralize because metaverse should be for everyone. Small for now. Thank you. <laughs> I think the company, all company has their own life time, uh, like a human being. So like big company, they can do uh, some, some changes in their way of thinking about this young customers, what they're really thinking about. And, and the, I think the metaverse is something, the phenomena that is uh, started from the young generations. And uh, looking back, why? Why they are so, so, uh, they why they are so want this new universe within this digital world? Why is that? And to answering that, I would say it's because they're not satisfied in the real world. That's the first thing that I think we really have to think about. For instance, for the housing part, not only Seoul, South Korea, and it's all about young people's problem that they cannot have the house because it's too, too expensive worldwide. So instead of having a house in real life, in real here, they want to possess something in the virtual world. That's, I, I think that's the part that we have to seek for the customer's needs and, and think what we can do for those young generations to, to make their life better. Although it's a virtual or the reality, it's about the happiness and the connectivity. So um, as Chris mentioned, I also believe in sort of the conversion or sort of crossing between virtual world and real world. Because on Metaverse, I think if it's completely virtual and not there's no relevance to your real world, it, I don't think it's going to be sustainable enough. Yeah, you might go in and have some fun, but you're not going to feel it as relating to you as it is um, uh, compared to when it's actually crossing over with real world and having more real world elements to it so it feels really relevant. So if on Met Metaverse, all the brands are fake brands that you don't know, it's going to feel much less relevant. So the corporations, the enterprises, if they actually digitize their assets and items and everything, um, a lot of things online on Metaverse, I think it's going to be it's, it's going to be a win-win for everyone, I believe. So then one final question for you, which would be uh, how easy and any tips since you have done it and you've been through building experiences and building products within the current environment of the metaverse, uh, how easy is that to do for someone new who wants to build something or anything that you've learned that you wanted to share as a final thought? Let me go first this time. <laughs> um, so the question was, how easy? Not easy. <laughs> Very difficult. Um, it's, it's taken a long time to come up with our beta version. And it's going to still become be very difficult to actually upgrade and go through the roadmap and path that I would love to go. I think in, in this sort of arena, metaverse and everything, I feel like I, I just talked about sort of you know, crossing over between real world and, and, and virtual world. The difficulty that I feel is it cannot be the same on virtual world as it is on, on real world, but it cannot be completely different because people need some relevance. So it have to be like, there has to be a balance, a, an attractive balance. So it's similar enough, but also different. So they, they can enjoy the metaverse as metaverse. Um, at the same time, um, you have to be different from other metaverse worlds out there, which there are very many <laughs> these days. Um, and so I, I think you need to find that edge and the balance between how the experience um, will feel for the users, especially um, also it has to be mobile friendly, right? So I think that's the difficulty, yeah. Maybe one more thought? Uh, let me answer, uh, because I didn't answer for the last question. So this answer is going to be the answer for both questions. So that is, uh, the last question is the, what is the role of enterprises in the metaverse, right? So that is the role. The, met the enterprises, companies should make, build the metaverse easy for everyone. Uh, did you see the movie, watch the movie, the Ready Play One, right? 
the oasis, you know, it's very easy to build, very easy to get in. So maybe some of us, one of us will build oasis in the future, then people will get in easily. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much. If you enjoyed the conversation, keep it going. We've got the K-Metaverse Pavilion over there. That's also where you can find out more information about the demo day that will be today at 2.30 p.m. So more information over at the K-Metaverse Pavilion. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, have a great day.